Hello, so it's Louise Martin Chu here um, with artist Sam Leach for Art Collector magazine, and we're discussing one of the paintings that features in his exhibition, which just opened at Sullivan and Strump in Sydney, and the exhibition's called Fully Automatic, which is a fairly ironic use of the title from what I understand. So I'm speaking to you from outside Brisbane and Sam's locked down in Melbourne. Hi Sam, great to see you. Hi Louise, good to see you too. So Sam, in this Pull Focus Art Collector series, we discuss one particular work and we've chosen Boucher and Super Studio, which is from 2020. And that's part of this really interesting body of work in, um, exhibited under the title Fully Automatic. So um, just to go straight to the question, Sam, Fully Automatic's an experiment, as I understand it, using machine learning to generate imagery that, as I understand it, kind of fits within your own oeuvre but also within an art historical canon. So I'm just gonna share the screen so we can look at this work. Um, and maybe Sam, you could talk to us about how we see that manifest in Boucher and Super Studio. Yeah, so um, basically my, my practice uh, has very often drawn on art historical uh, as well as you know, contemporary scientific and architectural um, imagery to, um, I guess, try and draw out aesthetic parallels over time, sort of a diachronic approach to, to aesthetics. And, um, you know, what I find interesting is sort of drawing out from the aesthetics um, aspects of, of culture that are reflected visually in those, in those elements. So the machine learning was a way of me, um, in a sense, trying to automate that process. So normally I spend a lot of time going through archives of, of images from various sources and looking for these for these parallels and trying to uh, put them together into an image which I then translate to, to uh, a painting. But with this I can basically put together a whole data set of images from, from art history plus whatever topic I'm interested in. In this case uh, utopian architecture ideas of the 1960s and 70s. Um, and let the let the algorithm let the the machine learning itself do that do that processing of finding the aesthetic parallels and and pulling them together into an image, and it'll basically produce um, a series of, of hundreds of images, and I can just sort of scroll through and select from the ones that I think look interesting to to generate into a painting, which is which is how we sort of ar arrive at uh, at this image. So the computer is not really uh, the algorithm, rather, is not really. In some instances, it's sort of directly quoting from, from the historical paintings. And in some instances, it's sort of more of a, a blurring or a smudging or just an allusion to a particular uh, shape or compositional form that, that's appearing. So in this case, um, it's actually, uh, I guess, combined elements of these super studio sofas with the uh, people who were, who were sort of demonstrating them. So there's people that have sort of been absorbed into these, into these sculptures. Uh, these, these sculptural sofas, uh, as well as the, the form of the sofa itself. Um, and it's sort of found there's an allusion to the uh, Boucher paintings, which you would find, you know, these figures kind of reclining on clouds floating into the, floating into the sky. Um, and so it sort of pulls them into, you know, to me, this quite satisfying melange of these, of these uh, factors. So what kind of stimulated the, the AI and you to draw together Boucher and Super Studio. Is it because of your interest in the sixties architecture, or um, yeah, well, in, in particular, um, with this show, the the title "Fully Automatic" comes from a book by Aaron Bastani, "Fully Automatic Luxury Communism," where he's basically proposing a, a, a manifesto for a post-work, post-scarcity society that's being supplied by um, uh, artificial intelligence and. 3D printing and uh, you know automatic robotic processes, and you know I, I love this utopian vision. You know his, his his kind of catch cry is infinity pools for everyone, and I think yes, you know that sounds that sounds great. Or you know it's uh, it's communism with champagne. I think this sounds this sounds <laughs> awesome. So I really so that's why you know I'm very interested in the utopian visions of um, of the 60s and 70s. You know that kind of ideal society, especially when it comes to things like a really luxurious uh, sofa. That you know you can imagine just sprawling out in in your in your post scarcity life, and the model um, and actually and Bastani draws this out. The model he says for a society that that is like this, in case people are worried they're going to get bored, is really you know the aristocracy of Europe in the 
uh, you know, in the in the Enlightenment period. So those paintings by you know Fragonard and Boucher and others, um, you know, that Rococo period really um, is an illustration of this kind of utopian utopian life. So it's a natural it's a natural combination to me. The other aspect is that when I'm programming the uh, the algorithm, when I'm supplying it, it's it's uh, if you like drawn to certain uh, graphical images from the data set, and so I kind of I kind of respond to that and tweak it by adding images or weighting certain things slightly differently to to just steer it in in certain directions to produce more interesting results for me. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a conversation between what the aesthetics of the algorithm are, if you like, and and my own preferences. So that also is a it comes into play. So there's a conceptual aspect plus, uh, you know, just what the maths wants to do. And fully automatic is an ironic title because this process hasn't really saved you any time, as I understand. <laughs> it. Um, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's but it, I mean, I guess it's. Uh, I mean, it's worked in a way because what, what I wanted to do was um, spend less time on, you know, really the, the Photoshop part of my process where I, would, where I would combine these images and spend more time in the actual painting. And it's absolutely done that. Um, but it does take me a lot longer to do the paintings. Uh, and also I've discovered a whole new body of work in managing databases. So that's a, an exciting <laughs> development. And can you just step us through what the journey is between what the computer kind of generated for you and what we see in the image that you've painted. So what, what I'm looking at from, from the algorithm, it's, it produces, uh, I guess, a, a fuzzy, often fairly pixelated image and it's quite, it's quite low resolution. So it's, it's only about um, 128 pixels by 128. So, you know, really almost thumbnail size. So there's a lot of um, interpreting, if you like, of what, um, you know, what's going in between those pixels when it comes to translating it to, to a painting. But that's actually, you know, a really enjoyable part of it. That's like, like figuring out a puzzle where you've just got these, you know, these two points on a canvas that you need to connect somehow. And what, like, what is the thing that connects, connects those two? So that's been, that's been like a really enjoyable part of, of that process. Uh, but it's really nice also to have what this, this algorithm is, is producing. It's like a framework, just the, just the basic uh, composition that I can fall back to. So when I'm thinking, well, what happens up in this corner, I can just look at this thing on the algorithm and say, okay, well, uh, you know, there's some kind of purple action happening up there. So I'll start with the purple action and then, uh, you know, resolve it back. So there's these little hints uh, and guides that I'm getting from the algorithm and then the rest is, is happening on the canvas while I'm painting it. Such an interesting process because I guess if you're feeding in the art historical canon, you've got a lot of already successful pictures. So do you think this predisposes it to produce a successful composition? Yeah, absolutely. It does. It does do that. And, um, you know, of course, I'm like, I'm in control of what's going into that data set. So a lot of, a lot of what's been happening in this space with machine learning is using large publicly available uh, data sets, you know, taken off, off wiki art or, you know, celebrity portraits or things like that. But uh, I'm, I'm really, you know, curating, curating my own collection that, uh, that I'm training it on. So I'm quite specific about the images. So not only, yes, there are paintings that I consider to be successful, um, but they're paintings that have some element that I want to um, draw from in, in producing my own work. Um, whether that's, you know, the conceptual content, because I, you know, I do always like to, um, you know, have some fun with the, with the conceptual stuff in the, in the works, but also just the, just the technical aspect of the paintings and how they're, how they're put together, the things that I like to see in there. And did this process meet your original intention for the painting and for the project? I mean, is this an experiment you'll continue to work with? Ah, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's so, there's so much to do with it. Um, actually, the, I'll, I'll answer the, that's, so that's answering the second part first. The first part, the, ori the original intention was to um, have a way to uh, predict what my next painting should, should be. So I had this idea that I would basically turn up in the studio in the morning, um, hit enter on the computer and it would say, okay, well today, make this painting. You know, based on all the paintings that I've done in the past, it would just look at a, tra a trajectory and make a prediction. And then I wouldn't have to do any of the hard work of, of, of dealing with concepts or composition or anything. I'll just get a print and I'll colour it in. And I thought, That's, uh, that sounds great. So, um, no, <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't quite, it didn't quite do that. 
Um, but that is still that is still uh, a project that I'm uh, that I'm trying to develop. Um, but it did open you know so many so many fascinating possibilities because you know what it's really doing is exploring this latent space between various eras of, of history and various um, aspects of visual culture. And it does it in a way that um, I certainly wouldn't do without the prompt of this uh, of this algorithm. So it's really giving me um, a new uh, angle to to look at these these uh, you know these archives that I've been looking at for some time, which which is something I really enjoy. It's an intriguing project. We could talk about it for um, hours, but in the time we've got. Um, is there anything else that you think collectors would be interested to hear about with your upcoming projects, Sam? Well, one of the things that I'm, I'm interested in, in looking at um, in relation to that uh, latent space is, uh, particularly with landscape painting, is looking at um, early colonial Australian landscape paintings. And with this process, it should be possible to reconcile landscape paintings with the imagery that they're uh, taken from. Uh, and then feed back into it paintings where we don't necessarily have an image of the original scene, but have it reconstruct what that actually would have looked like. So um, I feel like it's, it's a possibility to give us a new, um, uh, a new way of looking at this, this early history of Australia and maybe try and take off some of that colonial filter that's, that's been applied to it. So you're kind of reinventing the past with the future. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, well, look, thank you so much, Sam. It's been really fantastic to speak to you. Um, and I'm sure all of our viewers would be really interested to see Fully Automatic, which is at Sullivan and Strumpf in Sydney until the 12th of September. Thank you. Thank you very much.